Hey there guys, Owen here from Edgewords Training and today I'm going to be bringing you a tutorial on how to use the new Parallel Runner tool um, created by RunnerX. Now this tool is a command line tool, that means it must be used in conjunction with the command line. Okay, And now when we make use of this I must ask you to run it as an administrator okay so make sure that you do that because you will be needing the um, administrator privileges um, for this tutorial now the parallel runner um, like I said it's a new tool that's been implemented by RunnerX um, it came with the update of version 7.2 um, and basically what it does is allows us to execute a test in parallel so it allows us to do this through a web driver endpoint so we can do it remotely on another machine and we can run our tests in parallel now what this means I have uh, made up a little presentation to kind of explain it a little better so here you can see um, using the standard method which is known as a sequential method because it runs in sequence um, if we have a test suite okay so our test suite here is test one now imagine we've got to do some cross browser testing so we've got a test against various different browsers we must run our test sequentially against these various browsers so as you can see on this slide the test or the total test time would take up to five hours okay so that's going to be quite um, inefficient now the method that we are going to be using today is going to allow us to run in parallel and what this means is that the tests will execute at the same time so rather than our entire test or our entire testing time taking up to five hours instead we can run our tests at the same time okay so running in cross browser at the same time in parallel okay so the tests now should only take up to one hour okay so the parallel runner is really going to speed up our execution when doing things such as cross browser testing okay then guys now the first thing that we want to do is to ensure that we have another machine that we are going to set up as our web driver endpoint in order to run our tests on that external machine now for this demonstration I am simply going to be using a virtual machine okay so let me just open up my virtual machine I already have one uh, set up and ready to go um, and in here I do need to set up selenium grid because this um, uh, sorry, setting up a web driver endpoint does require um, Selenium Grid running on your other machine. Okay, so just bear with me for two seconds while this loads. Okay then guys, now once your machine is set up, you can go ahead and launch Selenium Grid. Now we have a blog post on this, on how to set up Selenium Grid, which I will leave a link to in the description. But if we just take a quick look, inside this folder this file I've just got a couple of commands in here okay so the first command this one is going to set up a hub now the hub is going to act as a kind of central management system it's going to select which machine to run which test on this section here this uh, command is what's going to set up a node now a node is basically just going to act as the machine that the test runs on okay so the hub is going to select which node to run which test on okay so the node is just the machine and you can start this locally so you can start a hub and a node on the same machine okay so I'm just going to now launch selenium grid so I'll click execute in terminal you'll see a couple of windows pop up now a couple of terminals and these are just both uh, this one is just going to set up the hub and this one is going to set up the node or it rather it already has okay so once that is set up you should see selenium grid hub is up and running and down here you should see something like the node is registered to the hub and ready to use so you can just minimize those okay and we can double check that our hub and our node is set up correctly by going over to a web browser 
and just navigating to this web page. Okay, so this web page up here. This is going to show you the hub, and it's going to show you the nodes, the nodes, sorry, that are registered to that hub. Okay, so if we had multiple, you would see them available here. And here are the browsers that we can use in conjunction with that specific node. Okay, so I can see that's set up correctly, so I can go ahead and close it now, and then simply minimize my um, virtual machine. Now the next thing I want to do is launch Ranarex. Now I've already got a simple web test set up, so it just goes to our web page, clicks on a few links, and then closes the application. So here we go, there is the web test. Okay, and if I run that back, you can see all it does is just goes to a web page, clicks a few links, and then closes the web page. Okay, there we go. So that's run successfully. You can see up there it is a success. Um, don't worry about this little warning box down here. This is just because I've got the virtual box um, application open. I can go ahead and close that now. Okay, so once we have a test set up, what I now want to do is add an endpoint. I want to add a web driver endpoint, and that's what's going to connect to my remote machine. Okay, so we do this by going up to this option just up here, View Endpoints. And over here you can see there are currently no endpoints added to this project. If I click Add Endpoint, I want it to be a web driver endpoint. I want to give it a name such as My Linux. Okay, um, make a note of this or just make sure that you remember because you will be needing that a bit later on. And the address is going to be in this format, so the example format there. Just copy that, paste it in there. But I'm just going to replace this local host with the IP address from my virtual machine. So I'll just go, got to minimize the GoTo meeting. So there, up to the terminal, and just type ifconfig. Okay, and I know that the IP address for this machine is this one here, 10.0.0.143. Okay, so I'll just close that, minimize that again, back into here, and simply type in there 10.0.0.143. And you can test the connection, and this is what we're looking for, this green tick saying connected. That means that it has successfully picked up that other machine. So I can now click Add Endpoint, and then Complete Setup. And there you can see that my external endpoint is now set up so this web driver endpoint and I can select it so I can set this as the endpoint for this test so if I do this just click there and then hit run you'll also notice just quickly that the run button has slightly changed that just means that it's going to run on a different endpoint rather than your local machine so if I hit run and then quickly jump back to the VM we should see that test execute. There we go, perfect. Okay, so it's clicking on the links, doing exactly what we want it to. Brilliant. Okay, and now if I jump back to my local machine, you can see here we've had a success. Okay, so that test ran successfully. Okay, so now I know that my project is ready to go, it's ready to run on another machine. Okay, so once my script is up and running on my other endpoint, my Linux, I can go ahead and close Ranrex. Okay, so back to an empty desktop. Okay, let me just move this window. <coughs> now, here is where I need you to open up the command prompt, but I want you to do this in administrator mode because we do need administrative privileges. Or uh, permissions. Okay, so what we need to do now is go to the Ranrex program files folder. Okay, and this on my machine is in my C drive, program files x86, and somewhere in here I've got Ranrex 
and I want to get inside the bin folder. Okay. Now the bin folder holds the parallel runner tool. Okay. So this is what this tutorial is about. It's this parallel runner here. We are now going to make use of it. And like I said, it is a command line tool, so we will need to navigate to this folder in our command line. Okay, so let's copy that link there and then just say cd for change directory paste that in there and hit enter so we're now in this folder perfect okay so once we're in that folder we can now make use of the parallel runner so you can type parallel runner I'll just type that much and then press tab exe and if I type dash h this is going to give us some help it's going to give us a list of the functions and the things that we can do with the parallel runner Okay, there we go. So we've got some of the arguments that we can pass in and some of the examples of usage of the tool. Okay, now the first thing I want to do, just quickly minimize that, is create the capabilities file. This is what's going to hold the various different capabilities, or in this case, the various different browser names um, that we are going to run our test against. So if I just type runnerx parallel runner.exe dash C and hit enter you can see there that has created a capabilities file the capabilities matrix dot xlsx has been created now you can also specify a location and a name if you wish using this format here but we can do this manually after we have created our file so let's go and find this now it will be placed in the same location that we are currently in which is in this folder you can see there the capabilities matrix has been created and if I just open this up you can see there this is our capabilities template now I am just going to be running against two different browsers so I am just going to get rid of everything else in there and then in here just browser name is going to be Chrome and the other one will be Firefox okay so these are my two different capability sets there is some more information about them um, within this templates and you can see a list of the capabilities here but for now I'm just going to be running against Chrome and also against Firefox but it's going to be running this at the same time so if I had various other browsers in here such as Internet Explorer Edge um, Safari then it would execute against all of these browsers at the same time I'm just going to go Chrome and Firefox for now and then click file and click save as and then here I'm going to specify a different location such as my documents and I'm going to give it a name cap matrix and then just hit save okay and once that is done I can now simply close this file so cap matrix is closed and I can minimize again the folder okay so once that is done we are now pretty much ready to go so I can now make use of the parallel runner now the parallel runner um, takes in a few arguments the first argument I'm going to be passing in will be the name of the test executable or the path to the test executable so again going back into my folder and I want to look for my project so the project was web test I want I want to navigate inside here again inside the project name inside the bin folder inside debug and in here we should see uh, project name dot exe okay, yours may be different because I've named on my project web test so I'm going to copy the path there and paste it inside quote marks there and I am going to add on the end the name of the executable so webtest.exe okay so that is the first argument now the second argument is the capabilities matrix file and we need to say dash m for this so dash m and then in quote marks the path to our capabilities matrix Okay, so this file here that we just made, the Excel spreadsheet. So I need to get my path to this, which is there, and pass that in. And again, I need the path to the cap matrix, so I need the entire path. So we go backslash cap 
matrix.xlsx. Okay, so the entire path. And finally, all we need is the name of the endpoint. So this is the name you gave your endpoint in Linux. Uh, sorry, in Runnerx. So mine is named my Linux. And that is the setup. So that is the setup completed. So if I just close everything there, and then back in my command prompt, if I hit enter, we should now see our tests execute in parallel. So we should see two browsers launch uh, pretty much at the same time. There may be a slight delay. So if I hit enter, that would help. There may be a slight delay between the browsers. But they should execute in parallel. Okay, so there we go. There, there are our two browsers launched at the same time, and you can see they are moving through the steps almost at the same time. Okay, and once that is done, we can again just minimize the VM. You can see there the runs were successful. Code zero just means there was no problems. Um, we can check out the results, and we do this by going to the again to the executable. Um, the project executable location. So this was in a web test project inside the bin again inside debug and then in here we should have a folder called parallel runs. Now this is again going to hold another folder with the date and the time and if we open this up in here we have the runs against the various different configurations or the various different capability sets. The file you want to look for is the file with the rxlog extension um, and this will show the results in the standard runner x format so if i just open this up you can see in here we've got our results we had a successful test run you can again drill down into the different steps and if you look up here we have the different configurations so the browser name chrome that was for this specific run and if i close that and then go to run number two we should see browser name firefox we go browser name Firefox so our test has successfully executed in parallel against two different browsers okay then guys I hope this tutorial has been helpful um, if you've got any questions or comments please leave them in the uh, comments um, box below um, and if you are having any trouble at all, please feel free to visit our website. That's edgewordstraining.co.uk, www.edgewordstraining.co.uk. Head over to the blog section, and in here we've got a bunch of tutorials that run you through step by step how to use different features with different tools. Um, and here is the parallel runner tool that I've just shown you. Um, and it runs you through step by step on how to use that. Okay, so if you are struggling, please feel free to refer to that. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a thumbs up. And until next time, goodbye for now.